everyone in this video i have gathered some material regarding the fringe benefits i will talk about the exclusions and the rates and limits for 2020 so let's begin first of all what is a fringe benefit it is a form of compensation other than wages provided to an employee uh, examples are health and life insurance vacation employer provided vehicle public transportation subsidies etc that may be taxable or non-taxable so the fringe benefits can be taxable non-taxable partially taxable tax deferred when we say that the fringe benefit is non-taxable means excludable from employees income uh, there are some fringe benefits that are specifically excluded by irc for example the qualified health plan benefits are excludable under section 105 partially taxable means part is excluded by the irc section and part is taxable the benefits may be excludable up to a dollar limit uh, one example is the public transportation there is a limit uh, of 270 dollars per month that is excludable for 2020 tax deferred means the benefit is not taxable when received but subject to tax later on for example the employer contributions to an employee's pension plan may not be taxable to the employee when the employer made the contribution but it may be taxed when it is distributed to the employee taxable means includable in the gross income Taxable means the benefit is included in employees' wages and reported on Form W-2 and it is generally subject to federal income tax withholding, social security, unless the employee has already reached the current year social security wage base limit and Medicare. By the way, 2020 social security wage base limit is hundred and thirty seven thousand seven hundred dollars if the recipient is an employee this amount is includable as wages means the taxable fringe benefit is included in the wages talking about bonuses bonus is a kind of a fringe benefit and they are taxable because no irc section excludes them from taxation now, when we talk about the non-cash fringe benefits, um, how do we know how much amount should be included into the employee's wages to be taxed? For that, there is a formula and that formula is uh, IFBA equal FMV minus EPA plus AEL. IFPA stands for includable fringe benefit amount. This is what we are calculating. We want to know includable fringe benefit amount. Fair market value is FMV. EPA stands for employee paid amount and AEL stands for amount excluded by law. So the includable fringe benefit amount is equal to fair market value minus employee paid amount plus amount excluded by law. How to report taxable fringe benefits? They are reported on the W-2 in the year they were received. The employer may elect to treat taxable fringe benefits as paid in the pay period, quarterly, semi-annual or annual basis, but not less frequently than annually. Now, there is a special accounting rule related to the taxable fringe benefits. Under this special accounting rule, the benefits provided in November and December means the last months of the year or shorter period in the last two months of the year may be treated as paid in the following year. 
Generally, the payments made under the accountable plan are excluded from the employee's gross income and are not reported on W-2. However, any kind of cash advances, allowances, and reimbursements that do not fall under the accountable plan rules uh, become wages and they are subject to the reporting rules. Now, the main purpose of this video is to talk about the non-taxable fringe benefits. And I have listed some of the non-taxable fringe benefits here. So let's read them. Number one is qualified employee discounts. Number two, qualified retirement planning services. Three, no additional cost services. Four, working condition fringe benefits. Five, de minimis fringe benefits. Six, on-premise athletic facilities. And number seven is qualified transportation benefits. Now you see that I've highlighted some of the letters for these uh, non-taxable fringe benefits. Actually, this is the way that I remember uh, which of the fringe benefits are non-taxable. I just use a mnemonic, draw, mat. So, where D stands for discount, R stands for retirement, A stands for additional, W stands for working, M stands for minimus, A stands for athletic, and T stands for transportation. So, just a little small way to remember the non-taxable fringe benefits. And next, we are going to discuss all of them uh, in a little more detail. First one is no additional cost services. So the employer may offer free services to its employees without including the fair market value of those services in the employee's income. But there are some conditions that must be met. And the conditions are that the free service is the one that regularly is offered to uh, the customers in the normal course of business. And the employer bears no substantial additional cost in providing the services to the employee. And the other one is that the service is available to all the employees in equal terms. And there is no discrimination in the favor of highly compensated employees. Now, for the purpose of benefits, uh, the highly compensated employee is someone who uh, was the 5% owner of the employer's capital stock at any time during the current and preceding year. Or for 2020, received more than 125,000 in compensation from the employer during the preceding year. The next one is qualified employee discounts. There are conditions uh, related to this uh, benefit also in order to be non-taxable. And the conditions are discount cannot exceed the gross profit percent meaning that the discount on the goods cannot exceed the gross profit percentage when the goods are sold to customers and the way the gross profit percentage is calculated is uh, total sales so how do you calculate the gross profit percentage it is total sales minus cost of goods sold divided by total sales that's the formula the other condition is that the discount on services cannot exceed 20 percent of the price at which it is offered to the customers it the discount cannot be more than 20 percent if it is more than 20 percent then the excess should be taxable to the employee 
Number three is that the goods or services must be offered for sale to customers in ordinary trade of business. There should be no discrimination for this discount, meaning that this should not be only given to the highly compensated employees. All the employees should be treated equal. Very important point is number five, which is that the real estate and personal property do not qualify for employee discounts. Real estate or personal property, real estate, uh, whether for investment purpose or not, does not qualify for the employee discount. And the personal property normally that is held for investment like stocks, bonds, and currency, that does not qualify for employee discount. If, if the employee gets a discount on this, then that is taxable. All right, and now let me ask you something. Let's say that uh, the employee of one company who, who purchases or lease property from the other company, is that uh, discount provided to the employee of one company who purchases or lease property from other company excluded from employee's income or is it included in employee's income? The answer to the question is that it is not excluded from the gross income because the discounted property was not offered for sale to customers by the same company for which the employee receiving the discount performed services. Next non-taxable fringe benefit is working condition fringe benefits. I've listed some of the working condition fringes uh, that are non-taxable. So I will go over the list. Business use of company car or airplane. Only business use. The personal use is taxable. Use of demonstration automobile by a full-time car salesperson. Meaning that if the full-time car salesperson is given an automobile to drive by the employer and the salesperson is using that automobile for personal use also, that is non-taxable because of the look of the automobile. Bodyguard provided for security protection that is non-taxable to the employee. Dues and membership fees is non-taxable to the employee. Business periodical subscriptions, that is also non-taxable because of a working condition fringe. Job-related education. So even the job-related education is non-taxable to the uh, employee if the employer contributes towards that. And then outplacement services. Uh, point to be noted working condition fringes can only be can be offered only to higher highly compensated employees means the employer can decide to offer this uh, these fringe benefits only to the highly compensated employee okay. now let's talk about the de minimis fringes De minimis means that the value of the uh, fringe benefit is so small that accounting for it is impracticable. For example, occasional parties, uh, picnics, holidays, gifts, uh, occasional meals, etc. But there are some uh, of the uh, fringe benefits that look de minimis, but even then, they should be taxed. First of all, anything, any cash gift or cash equivalent is always taxed, no matter how small the amount is. Then seasonal tickets to sporting or concerts, um, theaters, they are taxable. Membership in the private country club or athletic facility. 
if the employer buys uh, uh, buys you the membership fee uh, membership for some private uh, private country club or athletic facility that is taxable but if if the athletic facility is uh, owned or leased by the employer and all the employees are using it and if it's not open to public then it is excluded from taxes The last one I have on the list is use of employer owned or leased facilities for weekend, like a resort uh, or um, any other facility that is leased or owned by the employer and the employee is only using it for a weekend for fun, that is taxable. Qualified transportation fringes. Now, qualified transportation fringes, the employer may provide certain transportation fringe benefits to the employees without including the fair market value of the benefits in their income. And they are like transportation between home and work in a computer highway vehicle provided by the employer, meaning carpool or van pool that is provided by the employer. Uh, but there are some uh, conditions for that, that the vehicle seats at least six adults other than the driver. And at, le at least 80% of the vehicle's mileage can be expected to be for commuting. And at least one half of the vehicle seating capacity, excluding the driver, is used by the employees. So if that is the condition, then uh, the uh, that benefit is excluded from employees income there is the exclusion limit for transportation uh, and uh, for transit passes that are provided by the employer only up to 270 dollars per month is excluded amount in 2020 okay and this 270 limit applies whether the benefits are provided separately or are combined. Up to $270 per month is excluded from income for qualified parking provided by the employer. And it is not reduced if the combined with other qualified transportation fringes. So $270 per month is the limit for 2020. Now let's do an example. I want you to use the formula that we learned in the beginning. I'm talking about this formula. IFPA is equal to FMV minus EPA plus AEL. Where IFPA means includable fringe benefit amount is equal to fair market value minus employee paid amount plus the amount excluded by law. So let's do the example. In the example, the employer, our company, pays a parking space for employees. So the employer pays for the parking space. The fair market value of the parking space usage is $375 per month. It means that if the employee goes out and uh, tries to rent the place himself, he would have to pay $375 and the employer is paying that. Emily contributes $50 per month towards parking and Emily is paying $50 per month from her own pockets. How much should be included in Emily's income to be taxed? Okay, so here the fair market value is $375. The amount that is paid by Emily or the employee is $50. And the amount that is excluded by law is $270 in 2020. So how much will be included in, how much of this fringe benefit will be included in uh, Emily's income? It is $55, okay. So $55 is still taxable to the, to the employee because the employer is paying more than the tax uh, amount that is excluded by law and uh, uh, emily also contributed so we will uh, deduct that from this 
So whatever more excess paid by the employer should be taxable to Emily. Now here, point to note, transit passes provided in advance to employee who terminates before the value of the transit pass is expired, the unexpired value is included in employee's income to be taxed. Let's talk about on-premise athletic facilities. So if the employer has the athletic facility that he allows the employees to use, then it is not taxed to, that benefit is not taxed to the employee. But there are some conditions. The conditions are that the athletic facility is on employer's premises, whether leased or owned. The athletic facility is operated by the employer through its employees or by another entity. And substantially all the use of the athletic facility is by the employees maybe their spouses, their dependents are allowed. The term employee include current or former employee who left because of the retirement or disability, as well as their widows. And the athletic facility is not a resort or other residential facility. If it is a resort or a residential facility, it's private, then it is taxed. So these are the conditions that have to meet for the fringe benefit to be non-taxable and also this benefit can be only given to the highly compensated employees it the employer can uh, give it only to specific employees qualified retirement planning services so the any kind of advice for retirement planning is excluded. If the employer is just providing uh, the little general knowledge for the retirement plans and what is suitable to the employee, that kind of uh, advice is excluded. Okay, and but if if the employee is taking any services related to retirement planning like accounting, tax preparation, brokerage fees, that service is not excluded. I mean, the employee has to pay tax on the fair market value of that service. Now, that was the things that I put on my list. There are some other exclusions for year 2020. I'm just going to share the rates.